What's up legends, it's Dave Fishy Repeat here, aka Kiwi Sang Namja. And on today's video, I'm just gonna show you how to quickly and easily make the perfect drop rig for drone fishing. So part one is picking your trace and picking your trace length. Part two is attaching your swivel and then to your sinker. Part three is tying up each of your actual dropper rig loops. Part four is tying your top loop so you can tie that to your main line. Part five, how you connect your hooks to the rig. Part six is storing the rig. And then part seven, most importantly, is showing that this rig actually works really well. All right, so here's what you're gonna need. First of all, you're gonna need some trace. You're gonna need scissors to cut your line. You're gonna need sinkers, swivels to attach to the sinker. Obviously you need your hooks to catch fish. And then trace holder to hold the trace once you're finished making it. Okay, so first things first, picking your trace. Now I've got quite a few different traces here, it's not all black magic, but the one I'm gonna be using is the 60 pound shock leader. Now, you can use whatever poundage trace you want, but i found that the thicker the trace is, the more it puts off the fish. So you're always doing that balancing act that if the trace is too thin, you're either going to get busted off. If the trace is too thick, it might put the fish off. And also, if the trace is really, really thick, it's going to struggle to go through the eye of the hook. So 60 pound is what I find the best. It's a good medium thickness. All right, once you've got your trace set up, which is our 60 pound here, you're going to have to determine the length of trace you're going to use. Today, we're going to be making a five hook rig. I find the easiest way is to actually not worry about the length of starters. Get your bottom end, tie that off, and then just keep pulling out trace as you make more and more, rather than pre-cutting your trace length. That way you can end up getting caught out by not having enough trace. All right, the first thing we're gonna be doing is tying a clip swivel to the bottom of our trace, which will be going to the sinker. You don't have to use a clip swivel, but I do find clip swivels super, super convenient for at the end of the day when you wanna unclip the sinker, and also when you're starting up, when you get to the beach, it's a lot easier to use a clip swivel than a normal swivel. So we're just making a simple uni knot there, cut off the tag, and then the beauty of the clip swivel, is if you've got a breakaway sinker here, attach that on there, and you're all clipped up and ready to go. The swivel size doesn't matter too much, um, even probably the, the weaker the better because if you want something to sacrifice you don't want to lose your fish you would rather it break here rather than up your main line and lose your fish all it's doing is just holding on your sinker now the beauty of using a clip swivel rather than tying direct to your sinker means that if say for example there's more swell i can add more weight or alternatively say there's not a lot of swell or i want to use a smaller sinker or change the sinker up depending on if there's snags or stuff i can swap to a teardrop or even just to a sinker on a swivel if you're swapping to a teardrop you make a little loop Pass it through there, and then just clip on. Every time you have to do a knot, you're not only wasting time, but you're actually losing line each time. So it's really just that easy. Now we've got to start tying the dropper loops. Now I find you want the first dropper loop to be quite close to the bottom, but not close enough so that it would end up tangling with your sinker. So you go about 70 centimeters, and it's a super, super, super easy knot, this dropper loop knot. All you do, put in your mouth, poke a loop, and then slowly twist like that. Pass your original loop that was in your mouth back through the middle loop. Just moisten it a bit so it makes a better knot. Keep pulling, make sure it's tight. And that's it, it's as easy as that. Now, how to determine the length of loop that you're using for each drop loop is really up to you. Some people like to go a bit shorter, some people make it quite long. I find approximately about 20, 25 centimeters is, is perfect for me. And when you look where that is compared to the sinker, you'll find that it's about 15 centimeters from the sinker, which is absolutely perfect. So when it's lying on the bottom, you're gonna have your sinker here, your hook just off it, but still not tangling. And then all we do is do the same thing again, but this time we're making sure that this loop won't come in contact with the next loop. So similar to the hook, you're wanting that same distance of space between each dropper loop. So I find, again, it's probably about 70 centimeters. You go up a lot, a bit further, take another big loop. Pass it through. It doesn't really matter how many times you're passing through. I find about five or six is enough. And pull tight. That one was actually a bit short, that was my bad. So you're making sure that the loop from the first bottom dropper rig is not touching from the second one. They're nice and far apart. And then we just keep doing that and I'm gonna make another three more. Alrighty, now I've made my five dropper loops. It's time to make the top loop. You can put your hooks on first, but I just find if you're making your rig, it's best to put your hooks on last, otherwise you're just gonna end up with unnecessary tangles as you're going. So I will always have a clip swivel from my drone trace, which is about four to five meters long. 
So therefore, when I'm making up my dropper rig traces, at the top, I'll only put a loop knot. So then that loop knot will connect to my drone trace. So that's all we're doing here is just a loop knot. Similarly, you make sure that your top dropper rig loop is not going to come into contact with your dropper loop. So I've got that right distance. I'll just cut that. It doesn't really matter how long it is. In fact, the longer the better really. It's just it means if you get a tangle or you get bust off, you're just going to lose more trace. So this dropper loop, super, super, super easy. Just make a loop and then run that loop back up your main line. I just go five or six times. Always keep it nice and tight. Again, wet it. And then pull tight. Always make sure your tag is nice and tight and it's that easy. You don't want this top loop too big. Uh, this is probably a little bit on the big side just because it causes more tangles the more tag ends and loops and etc you have on your rig. So you got that, you cut your tag end off, nice and close, boom. Now we're on to arguably the most important part, attaching the hooks. Now you can really use whatever hook you want, you would not really want to use an octopus hook or an open hook just because the lines miles out might be 400 500 meters and you're not going to be setting that hook like you would with an open gauge or octopus hook so the best one is a circle hook now uh, i'm not sponsored by bkk but i fell in love with these hooks they're extremely good these uh circle glows they just seem to set in the mouth really well and also they hold the fish on real well as well so that's what i use you use whatever you want Alrighty. Now it's time for us to put the hooks onto our dropper rig. I've got different size hooks here. These are an 8 bar and these are around about a 4 bar row. I like to mix it up so that you can use big baits and then much smaller baits. See what's out there. If all your big baits are getting stripped when you're fishing, then I'd take your big hooks off and put on all small hooks. If you're getting donkey fish and they're either bending out your hooks or you're starting to gut hook fish, then I'd swap out and start putting on bigger hooks. But to start with, you do a mixture of both and you're into one. Now there's really two ways you can attach your hook on to your dropper loop. You can either put the loop through the front of the eye of the hook or through the back of the eye of the hook. I find if you put it through the front, it's a lot more effective at catching fish than putting it through the back. And I'll show you why. If you put the hook through the front and then tie that off, when the hook is hanging, it's resting perfectly in towards the line and in towards the bait. When the fish goes to grab it, the hook curls around and gets caught in the mouth. On the flip side, if you put the loop in through the back of the hook and tie that off and see how it's hanging it's actually hanging away from your line and it's hanging away from the bait so when the fish bites it's not coming around nicely it's forcing against the the main line and forcing against the knot and it's not going to hook very well so always attach in from the front so as i said you go in from the front push that in through the eye there you need to keep the entire trace loop quite tight because if it's not tight and you attach it wrong it's not going to be even at the end of the hook so keep that tight with your other finger you want to loop over the top of the eye just take a couple of wraps and then back again this not only increases the strength of this little attachment knot but actually holds the hook a lot more rigid on the end of the trace and then you pull it tight and evenly so that when it's been pulled in it's even there and it's actually hanging evenly at the end of the dropper loop and that's it and that's our first hook easy as that then i'm just going to attach the rest of the hooks now in addition to just having a standard circle hook attached directly to your rig some people do add tubing tubing is really good for uh, blue cod fishing and stuff when the fish are really common to spin around when they're being brought up and it just reduces a lot of tangles i haven't done that yet uh, for this rig i have done it in the past it works quite well i don't like to use tubing if i don't need to simply because i feel that it does put the fish off a little bit but that's just my experience the other thing you can do is add a little Lumo bead. So these will glow under UV light and supposedly are an attractant to the fish. Additionally, what they do is just add a little bit of float to when you're hooked and bait are in the ocean. So you add that there, again, a double wrap, hooked on, and then you've got your little, little glow bead there at the end as well. Now I'll just continue, put on more hooks. Now something else that I've heard you can do, and I, and I have been trying, but so far I haven't had any luck, is to use a soft bait on the same dropper rig. The beauty of using a soft bait would be that you might be lucky enough to get a John Dory or a Kingfish or other predatory fish that you're not going to commonly catch on a dead bait. So you can just use a worm hook, go up through the bottom there, loop back up on the top, and then you've got a beautifully dangling soft bait there. As I said, still trying this out, haven't had major luck with it, but I'm sure eventually I'm going to get something. And there we have it guys, this is our full rig. 
we have our sinker on our clip swivel onto our dropper rig. Got a big hook. And we're going on to a barrow hook with a little uh, glow bead there. Then we're trying out our uh, worm hook and a soft bait. Back onto an eight barrow with a glow bead. Followed on with another small circle hook. Little four barrow without a bead. Then onto our loop knot. Now if I was fishing, I would have my drone trace. Quickly get to the beach. Clip that on there. And we're already fishing. Now one extra little tip is if you're going for gurnard or just any bottom dwelling fish and, you, and there's not a lot of snags around and your drone can handle it is what you can do is add another sinker to the top and that's the beauty of having a loop is if you've got these little sinkers with clips on them you can add that to here it will add a little bit of drag and I guess a, a little risk of snag but no major we clip that on there that means that now you not only have a, a big weight at the bottom holding it to the bottom of the sand but you also have a weight at the top of your rig as well it's actually going to hold all of your hooks nice and flat on the bottom rather than coming up on that angle from your rod. So that's just an extra tip and I've actually done quite successfully using a style like this when I caught some gurnard. Now you've got to store your rig. I was starting to use these lure trace holders but I find that the hooks dangle around a bit and they're not really ideal. So just sticking with the old faithful, just some foam. I find it's easiest to start on the trace side because it locks in place. Just lock that in there. The beauty of the foam is it allows you to lock your hooks into the foam and not cause heaps of tangles. And here's another additional trick. You've got this trace, it obviously has lots of hooks on it. The chance of getting a tangle is really high in your tackle box. So what I do is put all the trace in a separate bag. That completely keeps all of these hooks in here from all your other traces. And if you keep them in separate bags, it means once you get to the beach, all your rigs are set up, you don't have a tangle, you can quickly undo it all, and you're away laughing. All right, here's our rig. It's all finished. Now, the most important thing is, does this rig actually catch fish? And this literal rig here has actually been very successful on multiple occasions, and I still haven't lost it due to a bust off. So to show you that these rigs I'm making actually work, check out a few of these successful trips here. Get some. <laughs> Pretty good fish. Those are donkeys. Get amongst it, you! It's not like him coming in. Oh, it's a trev, I think. It's a nice trev, though. That's a beauty. Of no wonder it was fighting like stink. Just, Just hooked. That's why I was real scared about the tension. Man, here's the trace there, look. What is it? Oh, it's a snapper. That's actually bigger than I thought, to be honest. So, it's as easy as that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Turn on notifications and hit that like button as well. If you're interested in more drone fishing videos, make sure you check out my drone tutorial video and then my drone fishing videos as well. Thanks, legends.